世界の皆様2009年東京ゲームショウへようこそソフィア・トーンショーン・マッキニスジャンカーロ・デラニリヒカルド・トレゲームスポーツ東京ゲームショウ2007 Hey everybody and welcome to a special Tokyo edition of Today on the Spot.、Uh, I'm here with the US and Australian teams and we've been covering the Tokyo Game Show since it started on Thursday. We've been seeing our usual mix of stuff and it's pretty interesting, so we're just going to show it to you and with extra pep because this year's Tokyo Game Show theme is games. It's so energetic, as you can see right here by our lovely Australian model. So we're going to give it to you with energy, so let's do it. We're making our way to the Museum of Game Science where there are several disassembled systems for people to come through the museum and look at to see how they work. It's a little taste of history, but if you want the real, real history of Japan, here's Ricardo with a look at that. Hey, so every year we come to Tokyo Game Show and we talk to you about the games. But this year we want to show you about the other side of TGS, which you may or may not know.、Uh, besides being all about video games and game culture for residents of Japan and the world, the show is also a really great primer on Japanese history. This year is especially notable for the show because, as you can see here, on,、uh, on October 11th, it's going to be the 2009th anniversary of the founding of Japan. And as you can see here, this is kind of what the country looked like before. But、um, you know, as we're going to see inside, once the Gundams came and cleared out the dinosaurs, then Japanese culture as we know it was allowed to flourish. So let's go inside and take a look. So, I'm standing just inside the entrance to Tokyo Game Show、uh, in front of one of these murals that's actually a recreation of cave paintings that are、uh, in other parts of the country. Here you see the, the death of the dinosaurs,、uh, skateboarding, cards,、uh, warriors on horses, and samurai, which are all key, key elements in, in Japanese history, which we're going to be getting a look at right now. So, let's go inside and look at some of the great displays they have here at the show. So, I'm standing here in the middle of all the crowds that are gathering. Uh, to hang out and sort of pay tribute to RX 782, which is kind of the main Gundam that first came down and began clearing out the dinosaurs. He's a very well known figure here in Japan. They make all kinds of historical games about him. Is, there's one behind me right now. Now, Western people probably are familiar with him, but not looking that way. Actually, you guys、uh, in America probably know him in his more casual form. So,、uh, if you've seen Statues of the Buddha, that's basically RX 782. Out of his armor, hanging out, being very casual. But this is when he's dressed for business. And as you can see, the kids love him. Now,、uh, another way that people have to show kind of their respect for the Gundams are these small shrines that actually get、uh, put up all over the place here at the show,、uh, where people can come by and make offerings or they can, they can adorn their game systems、uh, you know, with, with Gundam paraphernalia. Let people know they're down with, with Gundam. Now, once mankind had all the dinosaurs cleared away by the Gundams, they kind of wanted to honor their saviors. And so, what they wound up doing was they tried to make outfits that made them look like the Gundams. Unfortunately, because technology wasn't kind of equivalent to what the Gundams were doing,、uh, they couldn't really fly, they couldn't shoot missiles, and they weren't very big. But they looked pretty cool. Because it worked out so well for them, it kind of became like an art form, which was known as Samurai, which translated means mini Gundam. So, that's just another fun fact for you guys at home. And so, here we are, kind of pushing our way to the front of the large crowds of people that are here to actually see members of the Japanese royal family who are coming out.、Uh, they like to kind of maintain their contact with the, with the common folks, the normal people that come to TGS. So, they, they come, they hang out, they sit in a chair for a while, they smile a lot, they go like this. It's good because that way, you know, they seem like real people. Just like, you know, just like their subjects. So, Tokyo Game Show isn't just about historical figures. There's also some spots here to celebrate national sports heroes as well. So, behind me is Jin Kazama. There's a statue kind of praising him because he is one of the, the top competitors in the national sport of Iron Fist, which is huge in Japan, as I'm sure everybody in the States knows. So, they've actually got two, of,、uh, two statues dedicated to him fighting himself because he's so awesome. So, obviously, we've just been giving you a tiny taste of the rich tapestry of Japanese history. I mean, even TGS can't cover it all. You know, they do have informative stage shows like the one in the Koi Tecma booth where they're covering the different dynasties that have popped up over the course of history. Like, you know, you see the, the Dynasty Warriors Dynasty, the Ninja Gaiden Dynasty, and other places, you know, they have displays for the、uh, 
Dragon Quest Dynasty, the Final Fantasy Dynasty, there are just a ton. So do yourself a favor, research some Japanese history because we hope we've opened your eyes to just the, the wonderful world that it all offers to discover. Now here we are at the Acquire booth, publisher of such fine PC games as Wizardry and Wizard. Wait, hold, holy crap! What is that? Wait, you're not. Wait, Anthony, you're not shooting that, are you? That yes, is. Yes, I am. That is some twisted shit right there. Why, why, why are you shooting that? That is nasty. This is TGS. We're giving it to them. This is what they want to see. I'm shooting it. I don't think everybody wants to see that. In fact, we made a public service announcement about that earlier today. All right, all right. Let's check it out. The following is a data. We interrupt GameSpot's regular programming to talk about something more serious. TGS may seem like it's all fun and games, but there's a darker, seedier side to it. The exploitation of women. We need to liberate the booth babes. They're kept in cages, given virtually no food or water, and forced to wear uncomfortable clothing. For 250 yen a day, you could save the life of a booth babe. GameSpot will provide pants, hamburgers, and flat shoes to booth babes all over Tokyo. You see here, they're standing here all day on their feet, you know, forced into skimpy clothing, handing out flyers. Would you do this if you had any other choice? GameSpot supports Booth Babe Liberation. You should too. Please give generously, they could really use your help. We really, really want free range Booth Babes. Please donate now. Donate now. We urge you. Hey, this is Randolph here. This is Giancarlo. We're at the Tokyo Game Show. Now, Giancarlo, I've heard some stuff about booth bays being in danger to something. What's that all about, man? Yeah, you're hearing this whole weird, crazy campaign about how booth babes are mistreated, they should be let go, they should be free to roam, but we're here to basically tell you, the great audience, that this is all complete bull. Booth babes are, are alive and well here at the Tokyo Game Show. They're doing great. They have that razor sharp focus that they always have year after year after year. They're here handing out pamphlets. They're doing all that crazy stuff that only booth babes can do. But hey, you don't want to see us talking about booth babes. Check this out. How would we get our valuable information about these games without the booth babes? It takes courage. It takes a strong mind to smile every second of every minute of every hour during the Tokyo Game Show. Is she just doing the loser symbol? This does take a special skill. These women, they're poised, they're focused. You know, you just, you just can't take anybody off the street to come and do this sort of thing. And, and look at them, they're just so on the ball right now. You can see it in their eyes. The focus is intense, laser-like. You have to be wondering right now, what are they thinking? They're, they're, they're thinking about their game plan. They're thinking about how they're going to tackle this stage show. How, how do I pose? How do I, how do I make these pictures that these people are taking? How do I make them remember these pictures? All I know is they're going to leave it all in the field. That's what they always do, beef babes. They'll leave it all in the field. Oh, you have to. You have to. If you, if if you take this stuff home with you, you'll go insane. And that's why Booth Babes are so integral to the Tokyo Game Show experience. It's why we need them. It's why they're here. I mean, these women kill demons. This is a strong, powerful image and something that Booth Babes should be proud of. 
So there you have it. They're strong, they're generous, they can fight off demons. What more can you ask for? As we've seen here at the Tokyo Game Show, booth babes are alive and well, which only leads me to ask a single question. What kind of world will we live in without booth babes? The answer is a terrible one because we would be living in complete and utter chaos. I don't want to live in that world. Check out more on Tokyo Game Show at GameSpot. See you guys. Booth babes are fantastic. Hey, hey, dude, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure that sign says no video. What, what, what are you doing? For one, I couldn't read the sign. I didn't know that's what it said. There's a big red line through a video camera. How can you miss I read this? I was trying to read here. Brian has problems too. We shot something earlier. Brian can't read. He has problems with the language barrier. You'll see. Hey everyone, Brian Eckberg here at the 2009 Tokyo Game Show. And you know, a lot of people think that the language barrier between Americans and Japanese is actually a hindrance to your enjoyment of the show. I find the complete opposite. The fact that no one knows what I'm saying means I can say whatever I want, get things off my chest. White people that speak Japanese freak me out. And I think the US version of The Office is the superior version. And, you know, basically confess my soul to people who have no idea what I'm saying. There's a UK version and a US version. The US version, I think, is better. So let's hit the show floor and uh, check out some confession time right now. I, I, have, I haven't paid taxes in eight years. I have that exact outfit. You don't like the way I smell, do you? I can't adequately describe the infield fly rule. Some Japanese kid gave me the finger earlier. I have a mountain of credit card debt. And uh, I'll probably follow you home tonight. So, uh, uh, this bus, uh, we are our force entertainment. Uh, we are uh, uh, mobile from a uh, game development uh, co corporation. I've had a wet cough for weeks now. Uh, I guess make English. <laughs> My therapist refuses to take appointments with me. My daughter is three weeks old, and yesterday my wife sent me a picture of her giving me the finger. Um, I'm sore down there. <laughs> I can't pee standing up. I once made out with a cougar, literally. It was a cat, a big cat. It wasn't a 40-year-old woman, it was a cat. We made uh, a famous title uh, and Sega Sonic the Hedgehog and uh, Koe Nobunaga no Yabo. <clears throat> You're going to wash your hands after this, aren't you? <laughs> Who is Jennifer Love Ho Hewitt trying to fool? Eh? Food. Eh? Famous food. Ah, eh, sushi. <laughs> and uh, hamburger. Yeah, yeah and uh, fish and the chip. <laughs> the best Japanese food I've eaten since I've been here is a number two at McDonald's. Ah, uh, sushi. Uh. Brian, why are you telling me this? Sophia, what? you're a booth babe for Canada? That's awesome. That's my side job. Nice. Well, thank you. Hello, you're welcome. Everybody, Sean and James here behind the scenes at Tokyo Game Show 2009. We're going to give you a little inside look at how our video process works here. I spy one of our cameramen, Anthony, shooting a little action over here, so let's go see what he's up to. Hey, buddy. Hey, 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 put that. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're not doing anything important right now, are you? Yeah, I'm shooting some cosplay stuff down here. Wait, wait. Cosplay? Uh, yeah, that's what everybody's doing out here. Uh, you know, about getting into that, remember? Yeah, we've been talking about getting in that whole scene for a while now. Do you have any advice for us? First off, you need some help. These, this, these as costumes is not gonna work. I'm going as a white American dude. This isn't working. <laughs> Badly dressed. Go see Brian. Brian's right over here. I just ran into him a minute ago. If y'all need help, go see him. He's over here. He's, he's the vet. He did all the cosplay last year. Stitch costume. Had hey, a good turnout. Go see him. He's right over. I remember that costume. We should go see that guy. All right, guys. I understand that you guys are looking to get in some cosplay, right? We are. I remember you dressing up as Stitch last year, and that entire time I was just thinking, I want to do that. I want to be Brian. Well, now it's time. You can be Brian Cos, Sean. You guys have costumes. Uh, I want to give you guys some pointers, but Cos, do you have some? Do you have a game plan yet? Uh, I think I'm just going to try and look a bit bizarre and a little bit crazy, but the thing is that's going to blend in here, I reckon. It is going to blend in, so I'm going to give you guys some tips. Sean, obviously you're cute. We need to go for like the, the big eye thing, cute. I think you'll be fine. Cause for you, it's all about the body. Show off your curves. It's going to show off the puppies here. This, this dude's sexy as hell. We need to take advantage exactly. of that. Exactly. Let's show a little skin, show off what you've got. 
So uh, you guys got your costumes, right? Yeah, we've uh, got it, and I think it's going to work perfectly. Are you feeling good about yours? Oh, yeah, hella good. <laughs> All right, good. Well, let's see what you guys got. Let's check it out. All right, let's do this. Man, this guy's been gone a while. Can't wait to see what they're wearing. Hope they get here soon. Taking forever. Hey, Brian. Uh, hey, man, how's it going? What's going uh, on? You like it? You like uh, it? I went for cute. I totally went for cute, and I think I nailed it. All right, and 10 you, out of 10. Yeah, for cute. You're, you're wearing a suit. Hey, man, it's business on the front, party on the back. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, look, I gave you guys some advice. You didn't follow it at all, and I think you went a little bit too far. I'm just doing what you told me to. It's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, I'm sick of you guys. It's time for the pro to come out of retirement. Whatever. You guys meet me at the Namco booth in five minutes. All it's right. On. You're on. All right, guys. I think I think this Arizona. might be Brian. Holy crap! Is that you, Check Brian? Me out, it's Mechbug. I told you I'd bring my A game. I don't have any clothes. Jesus! On, how did you get in that thing? I think he might have overdone it a little bit. I'm locked in, man. Are you, do you need some water in there, man? Are you okay? Yes, I need water. Give me some water, God. All right. Oh, let's take a look. All right, that. let's let's get out of here, man. That's the, he he overdid it this year. Get me out of here, man. I'm tired. I'm fading, man. And I don't know about Brian this year. I think no. he went a little bit too far. Yeah, same here. And the fact, I'm a bit insulted that he called us ridiculous. I mean, at least we're not in a mech. If anything, that's ridiculous. And frankly, he put his own safety at risk. So, I don't exactly. know, screw that guy. Let's go yeah. back to Cosplay Alley and see exactly. if we can get our picture taken, all right? Some real cosplayers, at least, are there. Yeah, let's do it. sitting on their butt playing video games. That's so last year. It's time to get off the couch and get some exercise. Let's check in with Giancarlo and see what he has to say. Oh, hi. I'm Giancarlo Veronini. And if you're anything like me, and you're probably not, you like a good workout. You like to get those juices flowing in the morning so that you can, you can face the day. So it's a good thing that Microsoft's been working on this whole Natal thing, you know, that whole fancy pants camera thing that sees you and puts you in the game and you don't need a controller. The way that you move your body is the way that your character moves in the game. So if you like want to play basketball, you can just pretend like you're shooting hoops. If you want to play tennis, you pretend like you're playing tennis. You do all these crazy things, you work up a good sweat, and you know, it gets you ready to just face the day. So all this sounds great, but how does it really work? Here's Microsoft's Kudo Sonoda to tell us more about Project Natal. We wanted to make this new input paradigm, a new way of controlling games, where it's simple and approachable for everybody. So no matter what your age or gaming ability, you can get in and have fun right away, no instructions needed, right? But at the same time, we wanted to provide extra fidelity for our core games. So we're not just gonna make something that's like, oh, you know, it's just for these new users and not making stuff to, you know, really excite our core customers as well. So it seems kind of like opposite things. You want to make it simple and approachable, but you also want to add extra fidelity for core games. Well, this is something we can do, both of them simultaneously with Project Natal. No matter how many buttons or how many analog sticks you put on a controller, you're never going to get full body simultaneous character control in a game like this. There's no other control system that can give gamers that. So it's simple and approachable. It's extra fidelity for the core. But you don't just have to stand in one place and move, and, you know, move your arms and legs. You also can walk around and the character will walk with you. So I can move forward, I can move back, I can move to the left, I can move to the right. Anything you do, the character is going to do in game. And 
I greatly apologize because I forget if I said this already or not, but you know, it's all infrared. So it works in all lighting conditions. It doesn't matter bright light or total darkness. So any way you want to set up playing games in your house, you don't need a certain background, you don't need a certain type of living room, you don't need certain lighting conditions. Because the sensor can see in 3D, in the same way that we saw what somebody looks like, we can see your entire room. So we can configure the play space around your living room, right? So let's say you had sofas that you know, were smoothing in this way, we can automatically move the walls of the cord in. If you don't have a wall that goes back that far, you can automatically move the cord up. So we can totally customize the play area inside the game to match the dimensions of your personal like play area. The call is also coming with a multi-array mic for voice recognition and voice commands. So, you know, again, we're showing the full body stuff, but lots of other cool parts of the technology. So we've seen the technology, we've seen that it works, but Microsoft is time to show us the big guns. We want to see those first person shooters, those full on sports games, those big RPGs. We really want to see what Natal can do and we really want to see where Microsoft is taking the Xbox 360 in the future. If you thought they were done with Metal Gear, then you were wrong. Here at the Konami booth, you can download and play the new Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker for the PSP. Check it out as Giancarlo tells us more. Alright, so we're here in our uh, studio for the uh, time being, our hotel suite, nice. Um, got, a, got a demo for Peace Walker here, right? They're just showing this off at the show now, first time playable, right? Yeah, so if you have your PSP at the show, you can actually download the demo. And really, th this is an opportunity for Konami to show how this game controls because you know, previous Metal Gears on the consoles like the PlayStation 2, PlayStation, PlayStation 3, you, know, you have dual analog sticks. Obviously, on the PSP, you don't have that. Mm -hmm. So they've done a few things to try and compensate for that. So as you can kind of see here, I'm rotating the camera using the left and right button, so the square and the circle button to move the camera left and right like that. And to move it up and down, you actually press triangle and X. Um, you can basically cu also customize this any way you want to by going into the options menu. There's actually a ton of different uh, sort of things that you can change around. You know, when you're in the default camera mode, you can change if it's inverted. If you're in the aiming mode, you can change if it's inverted and things like that. So another thing that they've sort of changed is how you manage your inventory. So instead of pressing the shoulder buttons as you would in the console games, you actually press right on the D-pad to access your weapons and you can select them by pressing square or circle or you press left on the D-pad to get to your items and you do the same thing there. So it's, it's you know, given what the PSP can do and, and the options that they have, I think Konami did a pretty good job. Um, it does take a little while to get used to the camera and a little bit used to the aiming, so here I'll try and take a guy out with a sniper shot here. And you can see it's a little, it's a little jumpy to get the head shots, but if you just a little bit patient, you can get it and take him out. I'm pretty sure he's found you at this point. Yeah, no, I'm he's not found sure me. The uh, laying down is going to be too helpful. But but it's worth showing here that I can't actually move. So even if I'm in this mode, you can't do anything. So this is really meant as just a full as a full on hide move. So in case guys or enemy soldiers are going on patrol around you, you just kind of go down into that mode and that's it. Now, when you're right next to somebody who's shooting at you, you would rate that as being a fairly poor time to be using that maneuver. Yes, no, that's really really bad. You okay. don't you do not want to do that. All right. Well, there's also some multiplayer in this game, right? in the demo? Yes, there is. There's actually, so a big thing about Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is that there is actually co-op. Mm -hmm. And there are a few different levels that have varying amounts of players that you can do. So sneaking missions typically will have up to two players, uh, but there are actually also things like boss battles that have support for up to four players. So four different snakes can actually fight this boss at a single time. But it's actually a really simple system. Basically, all you have to do is go in, select a mission, and it'll ask you if you want to do single player or if you want to host. You just select host, and it'll ask you which channel do you want to broadcast on. This is just so when someone's joining a game, they have to match the channel that you're broadcasting on. Um, so once you do that, it'll, it'll start broadcasting the signal. You just wait a little bit. OK, so we've, we've had someone join our game. So we're actually, before we jump into the mission, we're actually going to show something that's also kind of cool, is that you can select different kinds of snakes. Um, so basically what you have here, you have Jungle Fatigue Snake, who's kind of a, a middle of the road version. He has, he has an assault rifle, and he has decent stealth ability, he, but he doesn't have a whole lot of armor. And then we have uh, Sneaking Suit Snake, whose stealth level is really high, is really good at hiding from enemies, um, but he's also kind of weak. He doesn't have much armor, so he can't take a whole lot of damage. 
And here you have Battle Dress Snake, so he can take a ton of damage. Uh, his stealth isn't great, but then again, he doesn't really need it. And then finally, there's Naked Snake, who's kind of like the Rambo version of Snake. Um, he has really powerful weapons and he's really fast, but obviously, as you can see, he doesn't really have any armor on because he doesn't he's have a shirt kind of on. He's naked-ish. Yeah, so for this boss battle, we're actually gonna choose Naked Snake because he has that RPG. Um, and then all you do is just jump right into the mission. All right, so now we are going to be fighting a tank. Yes. And we're gonna do it naked. Yes, um, and another thing about co-op, what's interesting, in the previous trailers, we always saw multiple snakes. Um, when you're playing in co-op, the person that you're playing as that you see on your screen is always snake. But when that person sees my character, the other person that's in my co-op game sees a character with a mask on or with a helmet on. So it's not what the trailer suggests. It's not about like four snakes in a single game. All right. So we're starting up the co-op. A uh, few interesting things to note here is that you can actually trade items if we're close enough to each other, and you can see if you're close enough based upon these orange rings that are circling both characters. When you actually move far away from each other, um, these rings will eventually turn white, which means that you can't trade items and you can't do the sort of the uh, the buddy system. Just interactions of any sort. Yeah, so I can't do the thing where I run point and he follows automatically behind me. So. Um, but for this particular boss battle, um, you can do any number of things. We can actually separate and kind of take it from both sides, or we can stay together, which probably wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. So I'm actually going to run out here um, and try to take some cover. Well, hopefully my co-op buddy is doing the same thing, but who knows. And the problem here, though, is that if you take cover for too long and you draw the attention of the tank, it can actually eventually destroy your cover. Um, so we're going to pull up, see if we can pull up the rocket launcher here, and see if we can get a few solid shots in on it. So at this point, you're sneaking up on the tank? Yeah, hopefully it doesn't have, it's not, oh. So it has the, so the co-op guy is actually drawing its attention, but now it's actually focused on me. But I'm going to try and get a shot off anyway. Oh. There we go. And the key is to kind of kind of hit it and move around. And at the same time, you have these foot soldiers that are in this area that are also armored. So you have to worry about them as well. And the problem with them is that they're since they're heavily armored, it's actually better to try to take headshots, hit their helmets off, and then take another headshot and, and knock them down. So yeah, I mean, this is basically um, one of the bigger co-op matches. You can have up to four players um, in this mode. What other sort of modes are there for the multiplayer? Um, well, actually, what's sort of interesting is that you can, um, in Peace Walker, one of the big things is that you can go back to the old mission. So if you, if you played through a mission by yourself, um, you can actually go back to that same mission with a co-op buddy, and chances are some parts of it will actually be different, because there are certain sections in these levels where you can only get through with your co-op buddy. And it's also worth mentioning that um, even when you are playing co-op, um, there are some times where you can go off into a different section of a level by yourself, but then there are sections where you need your co-op buddy to come along with you, so you can't just leave him behind. Let me see if we get another shot here. No, gotta reload. All right, so that's it for the uh, Peace Walker demo. Now, any sort of release date, it's pretty vague at this point. Yeah, so right now they're only talking 2010, um, so we'll have to wait till next year till we get a hold of uh, Peace Walker. All right, well, I'm sure we'll have more coverage of that. And uh, let's go back to the show floor and see what they got going on down there. So if there's one thing about TGS you can always count on, it's the crowds. We've been coming here for a bunch of years now, and every year this place is packed. You know, we've been a little lucky, though, because we haven't had to worry about, like, T-virus or zombie outbreak or anything. Okay, so I guess we're not going to go back to the floor. Uh, zombie problems. What do you know about zombie problems? Uh, I don't know anything about what's happening on the show floor because that looked T-virus related, but uh, I just saw Dead Rising 2. Basically. Dead Rising 2 is not T-virus related, but it is zombie related? It is it's definitely zombie related, and we've got, the, for the first time, got hands-on with a single player and the New Alliance multiplayer last night. 
All right, what, what did you see for the uh, the single player? A lot of different weapons, yeah. like sticking uh, chainsaws to other things and using them on zombies. That, that is right, it's just a lot of zombie slashing. So uh, Frank, uh, the character from Dead Rising 1, isn't in this one anymore. We got a new dude uh, called Chuck. Don't know too much about Chuck at this stage. A little motorcycle guy, he's got a, got yeah. a bright jacket, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so the character development so far is he's a motorcycle racer and he wears a sweet yellow leather jacket. So obviously he's a badass, body. right? But mm. how many many pieces can you chop a zombie into? Well, I saw maybe 17, 17 in one pieces? go. 17 pieces? Is that from one zombie? Uh, no, that was like three zombies in, 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 in total. Oh. But basically, the level that I showed us yesterday was uh, was basically a 10-minute level set inside this casino. And, you know, it's Dead Rising, so there was lots of zombies around. The whole point, basically, was to try and hack as many zombies as possible. With lots of weapons lying around. You ask, I guess, what sort of cool things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen, like, you know, the chainsaws on a paddle, yep. do a bit of paddling, some yep. zombies. Yep. Uh, there was like, there was katanas in there. Katanas, there was, um, there was um, electric guitars that made like electric a guitar. twang sound every time you uh, every time you shot, uh, every time you hit someone, mm. yeah. But my favorite was those, um, was that paddle with the paddle. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, come on, two two chainsaws on a paddle, how can yeah. you go wrong there? And the best way of locomotion through yeah. zombies is via paddle and chainsaw, I hear. Yeah. Hmm. So once you got to 300, basically, once you got to 300 kills within 10 minutes, it unlocked this special 90 second section where this new weapon, which is basically a wheelchair with machine guns mounted on the side. Uh, that, um, that Chuck could ride around. So basically you're wheeling around and just mowing down zombie mofos like it ain't no thing. All right, mm -hmm. uh, multiplayer. Did they talk about anything at the event? What they they had a bit of an announcement, yeah? Yeah, that's right. So they announced that there was they were actually going to have a four player multiplayer in Dead Rising Two, and it's all sort of set around this whole uh, uh, terror is reality TV show that's within the game. It's a little bit sort of wrestling, but with Smash way more TV, undead. Yeah, yeah. Zombies and chainsaws. Exactly. So you're competing as one of four dudes, and they had they showed off four events yesterday, and you basically had to compete in these events, kill as many zombies as you could and you get points for doing it and you know the winner at the end got awarded i don't know you know eternal a, a life. zombie award you are the slayer of zombies exactly. and everybody bows down to you exactly it was pretty fun it was pretty short though and you know we'd probably like to see a few more different types of games i mean probably the most inter interesting one they had was uh, one where you're basically riding a motorcycle with two chainsaws going out on the other side of the handlebars and you're just basically riding through fields of zombies annihilating them and it was kind of hard to see at some stage because the blood was just splattering yeah, all over the screen. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of blood in that game. Just it, you know, it's probably going to be like what a teen rating, you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I probably. Mean, it's yeah. you know, it's it's just it's very moderate. Well, it, it, it's cartoon violence. Yeah, right? I mean, they're, they're not real humans. They're they're, they're the they're, undead. No, they're, no, they're 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 not real people. Exactly. Nobody really likes them anyway. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I mean, Dead Rising Two. Any release date at all? No, all they've got is the future. The so that's future. T it is TBA. TBA two thousand and ten, which is lucky because we're already in the future. Yeah, well, we're gonna go back to the past soon because we are done with this show and uh, we're gonna have a lot more coverage coming up on the site. Be sure to check out all of the videos and the stories that are going up. I mean, got a lot of stuff going up. Any, anything else you wanna say on this? No, I think that's it. I mean, all right. it's been a great show. Yeah, and remember the theme of the show. Games, Games. It's, it's so, so energetic. energetic.